Hello, everyone. Hello again. Hello. Welcome back. Yes. Uh, hi, Wafa. Hi. How are you today? Doing fine. How are you? Good, good. Thank you. Um, um, and Ken is back? Yes, hello. It's good hello. to see you again. And also, Ken and Heidi are here from Japan. They can help me today. Hello. Hello again. Yes, hi. Welcome back. Uh, Christoph, I think you have an echo. Someone does. Um, and uh, who else is here? Uh, Bogdan. Hello, teacher. Hey, how are you? I'm fine. Uh, it's a little quiet. Um, yeah, I know. That's okay. Where uh, Where are you yeah. from? I'm from Macedonia. Ah, that's better. Macedonia. Yeah. Cool. You might be my first Macedonian student. <laughs> yeah. That's great. I like it when I find someone from a new country, for me. At least. <laughs> uh, so what do you do? I think I'm studying. Actually, I'm still in high school. Okay. Great. And um, do you come to Colingo classes often? Yeah, I'm often here. Okay. Good. Good. Um, I'm glad you're here. Yeah. Good. Uh, welcome. So I heard that uh, it won't be for free, right? <clears throat> yeah, the Kalingo is going to go into like um, a subscription style service, or more like paying tuition for school. You can always watch the videos and watch the live classes for free, uh, but to but to be a student in the class, that you have to pay a monthly fee, which will start in two hours. Okay. Um, so uh, one thing I will say that is we do give a free trial. Okay, so if you sign up, the first week is free for everybody. That's our promise to you. Zero. Yeah. If you want to try it, you can check it out. And I also have a coupon uh, for half off the uh, first three months. So that's half off. If you want to try that? So if you want the coupon, let me know. I can I can get it for you. Uh, and uh, who am I speaking with, Hamid? Yeah, I'm Hamid. Hamid, uh, have I met you before? Uh, no, I think it's my first class with you. Okay, nice to meet you. Where are you from? Thanks. I'm from Morocco. Great. Which city? Rabat. Rabat. Okay, good. Yeah. And what do you do? I study English literature in university. Right. Ken, don't you also study English university, uh, English literature in university? Uh, I, I, I'm stu studying American literature. American literature. Okay. American. Yes. Similar. Wow. Okay. I thought some, I thought I remembered something similar. Okay. <laughs> cool. Great. And nice to meet you then. Thank uh, you. Uh, Fernando has joined us. Fernando, can you hear me? I cannot hear you. Um, okay. um, how are you doing, Heidi? I'm fine, thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, having a good morning so far? Yeah, I'm checking um, e emails, but I, I've never received an additional message to sign oh. up. Okay, for the, for the coupon? I received and I received a message only once. Okay. Well, if there's any problems, you can. If you have an issue or a problem with the with the subscription, um, send Daniel an email, and he's going to try I to help. I just got my coupon today. You did? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I don't know anything about that. I'm just I'm just teaching the classes. I have I don't know anything about how it works yeah. for, uh, for signing up. All new to me, so I'm just here to teach you. Um, but Daniel can answer your questions. Um, hopefully. Okay. And uh, Nathan. Hello. 
Hello, how are you? Oh, hi. Thank you for asking. Yeah, have I met you yet? Uh, I'm just here. This is my first time to new class. Oh, okay, great. Um, it's hard to hear you. Is there some noise happening in the background? Is there, do you have yeah, a maybe radio? Maybe watching some movie. Yeah, is there a TV or something? It's hard to hear. Um, so we need to make sure we have a nice, quiet listening environment for the, for the class to run smoothly. So, um, it's not you. I don't know who it is. It's like there's a movie. Yeah, I need you guys to just turn off any extra noises. Um, that was Hamid. Okay, Hamid, you got to turn off any extra noises. Okay, Natan, sorry, I muted you just to check something, but Natan, uh, where are you from? Okay, uh, I'm from Indonesia. Mm -hmm. okay. um, I am a student from the university. Uh, oh, what's next? Uh, Oh, I'm sorry. I can't hear. You. I can't understand you. It's too. It's hard to hear. Um, the things quiet, and it's very. Are you close to the microphone? Because I can't. I can't understand what you're saying. You said you go to. You're gonna go to university. Hello. Mm -hmm. Yes, I'm at university. Mm -hmm. All right, and. Uh, this is my first first time in your class. Uh, I just I can uh, learn for some English conversation, maybe. Okay. Good. Yes. Well, we're, yeah, we're we're glad you're here. Welcome to the class. Okay. Thank you. Sir. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Okay. Uh, So, um, okay, so um, I like it when I teach uh, lessons like this when I have people to help me. We're talking about Japanese calligraphy here, uh, so maybe um, Ken and Heidi can, uh, can help us with the lesson if I have questions, um, or at least uh, insert their comments when, when they want. And... Our grammar skill is adverbs of frequency. Uh, so I, I often teach I often teach adverbs of frequency in Kalinga. <laughs> um, I hope it will be uh, that will be changing soon. So what do we know about adverbs of frequency? I think most of us uh, know these things. Um, Christoph, what, what's going on over there? It's my book about uh, oh. Japanese calligraphy. Oh, cool. Awesome. So you can also help us. Have you been practicing? No, it's a book about calligraphy, uh, sign, how to do it. Cool. All right. Awesome. Thanks for sharing. That's cool. So we have I'm surprised um Angel's not here. I thought Angel was interested in Japanese. Uh awesome. That's cool. I I'd like to see that book. So um we can look at that later maybe when we talk about the different um styles. And um So um, I'm going to ask you guys a question. It's a very simple question, but it's just to, just to kind of warm up on our adverbs of frequency. And so, um, Ken, mm -hmm. how often do you write with a pen or pencil? Like, not on a computer, but how often do you write with a pen or pencil? Uh, recently, it's rare for me. Even, I, I mean, when I w uh, write an uh, official document uh, in a, you know, uh, city government office or yeah in that case I write it on by my hand but uh, usually I wrote wrote the sentence 
uh, on text on computer. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, so he says, recently it's very rare that I write with a pen or pencil. Right, so... Problem, uh, sorry, problem uh, of using computer is, you know, the, uh, I forget a lot of Chinese characters now mm -hmm. by my hand. I cannot write a lot of them by, my, by hand, but I can write it on the computer because computer has a trans, uh, changing system. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. From the sound to the character. Right, okay. So, yeah, this is interesting what the computer age is doing to us now that um, uh, we're writing less and less, and how is that affecting our lives, right? So, um, adverbs of frequency we talk about can well, rarely well, use uh, uh, pencil. So, um, good. Uh, Bogdan, what about you? Yeah, I'm writing with a pen or pencil almost every day. Almost every day. Okay. Yeah. Mm hmm Almost every day. But there's another other way to say it. Good. Cedric, what about you? What's the question again, sir? How often do you write with a pen or a pencil? Well, sometimes when I when I draw or or writing Writing is scratch, I guess. Sometimes? Mm -hmm. Sometimes, sir. Yeah, sometimes. So we have rarely, we have uh, almost every day. We have sometimes. These are all all correct answers. <laughs> because I'm asking the person. And um, about, Fernando, can you hear me? Are you there? Yes, in fact, I'm here. Ah, yes. I hear you. How are you today? I'm very good. What about you? I'm um, doing wonderfully, wonderfully. And um, how about you? How often do you write with a pen or pencil these days? During these days, I rarely write with a pencil. Mm -hmm. Current days, it's mainly we we do with a computer. Yeah. Hardly ever. I hardly ever write with a pen or pencil. There's yeah, it's it's hardly, really hardly. It's what? Hardly? Mm -hmm, yeah. We say hardly ever usually. I, I, so it's like saying rarely, but it's, uh, you can say barely ever. Yeah. Oh, okay, barely those, ever. All, those all mean the same thing. Hardly ever, barely ever, rarely, seldom. They're all almost exactly the same. But in the United States, we, all, uh, we m most frequently say, uh, I, I, I hardly ever do it. Hardly ever. The most common in the in, in typical speech in the in the United States. Ah, okay. Yep, but they're all good. They all work. Yeah, Heidi, how about you? Heidi. Every day, always. Ah, every day, always, <laughs> always writing. Uh -huh. Do you I put the notebook and the pen in front mm -hmm. of a uh, computer. Then ah. every day I write down something. Mm -hmm. So like when you're taking these classes, you take notes on a pencil? Okay. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. I do sometimes. Not to record the uh, lesson. In my case, writing was very good to memorize. So mm -hmm. only memorizing. Yeah, okay, so for memorizing. Um, From hand. I, I keep a pen and pencil and stuff like that here. I have a piece. Of, I always have a piece of paper because sometimes I need to write down different things while I'm working here to teach them. Uh, or if I think of something, or if I have a student whose name is different than their username, <laughs> then I have to remember what their name is, really. And so sometimes I do that to help myself. Teacher, uh, I'm really sorry. I gotta go. Okay, no problem. Yeah, because it's Ramadan here. I'm fasting, and now I gotta go to eat. Oh yeah, that's important. Yeah. Okay, take care. Thank, you. thank you. Yep. Have, have fun. a nice day. Have see you. Um, good. Uh, every day, right? everyone has had a everyone has completely different relationship with their pen or pencil. <laughs> uh, Christoph. Um, so short notes I do every day. Mm -hmm. uh, I 
uh, use pencil to do and post it. I mm -hmm. sometimes uh, leave a message uh, to my parents on uh, refrigerator with, on post it. Uh huh. So short notes, like to your parents or something. You sit you in the same house as your parents. Yes. Yeah. So you leave notes. I'll be back in two hours. <laughs> going to the store. And uh, but otherwise you don't use pencils. Okay. Good. Uh, Nathan. Yes. How about you? How often do you use a pen or pencil? Uh, I, uh, I think so. If I get as important to in writing, I use a pen, and else I use a pencil. Yes. Okay. Uh, how often? Uh, maybe pen, I guess. I'm sorry. I I can't understand you. Every what is it? Every week. I I I always use a uh, pen in my okay. in my book. Okay. Yes, to write. Yes. Okay. So you always use it in uh, in book. Uh, okay. Always. Good. Great. And uh and Wafa. Yes. Uh, how about you? You was calling me. Mhm. Mm okay. Uh, for me, it's almost every day. Almost every day. Mhm. Mm yeah. Okay. There's no right or wrong answer here. Just wondering, and just getting and practicing our adverbs and frequency. Hello, Angel. Hi. <laughs> I frequently, I often teach adverbs of frequency in my Calling no class. Yeah. <laughs> I don't choose these; they just pop up on my screen. Um, <laughs> so I was wondering where you were. I thought you, I thought you might be interested in this class. Yeah. I was outside. <laughs> yeah, I'm checking it out. Yeah. And, um, and we have two folks from Japan with us. Oh. And Christoph brought his book to to class. Oh, nice. So we're all we're all ready. Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm Cool. So, um, so, um, 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 so I've taught this before, but as far as pronunciation goes, when you're talking about, when you ask, what is the question that you ask when you're wanting to know about frequency? What is, how does it usually start? What is, how do you ask? That? How, how often? Mm-hmm. How often? Yeah. And um, I, have you probably been to some of my classes where I've taught this? Mm -hmm. um, so what? How can we think about how long, sir? Mm -hmm. oh. um, no, how often is frequency? How long is more just time? Like how long is like the answer would be mm -hmm. five months or ten years. Okay, sir. And how often would be like rarely or sometimes. So those are different. Mm -hmm. So frequency is more like how often or something like that. Usually how often. So um, now we can say, teacher, we can say how usually. How usually? Yeah. Um, how usually? No. No, it's more strange. That yeah, doesn't really work. How often? Yeah. Um, you could say how many times a week do you? Ah, uh, yeah. If you want to be specific, yeah. or how many times a year do you go see your grandmother? You know. Then it's asking a specific question, and you can answer yeah. with a number. You could say eight. <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. Times a year. Yeah. So that's that's also you can do that. So about how often we talk about how and often when we put those words together, how can we sound more American? How can we sound more fluent? Often. I'm saying that. Often. Often. How often? Yeah. How often? Yeah. So we don't want to. So we don't want to re re pronounce the O. We don't stop on the O. How often? But we just glide it together. How often? So it's like wah. How often? Like, how wah. often? Oh. Like wah wah, like water. How, how about often? Some people pronounce this word as often. 
Mm-hmm. Is it common in America or? Not it's not as common. They're mm-hmm. both correct. They're both correct. I sometimes say often, um, if I'm being very astute or if I'm being very academic or if I'm over pronouncing my words for some reason or over emphasizing my words, sometimes I will say, I often go to the symphony. <laughs> but normally in, in regular speech I say, uh, how often do you shave? <laughs> so, um, uh, how often? Yeah. That's more, more typical. But they're both correct. Um, good. So, let's see here. Um, I don't know. Do you guys want to go through this again? I mean, is anyone... Is this, well, is this hard for anyone? Does anyone want to learn more about adverbs of frequency, or is this, like, too much review? Too much review, I think. For me, it's all. Yeah. I think, I mean, I personally have taught this, like, three or four times in the last week. And it's not, it's not Colingo's fault. It's not my fault. It's just um, they're working on their new site, and they're just, we're just getting everything ready here. So we tend to repeat some of these things. Um, so then let's have a little discussion. Let's have a pre-discussion before we get to the article, and then we'll have a post-discussion. Um, so we have a few people here that are interested in this topic. I don't know anything about it, really. I'm just teaching it because I thought it would be a fun discussion point. And so I'm learning, too. I'm also a student. Um, I love learning about alphabets and writing systems and different um, calligraphies. So for me, it's just interesting. It's beautiful. Um, so I guess I have questions for like, especially like Ken and Heidi. Um, how, what kind of experience do you have with calligraphy? And uh, I mean, is it something that you are you learn in school at a young age, or how does it work? Yeah, I've learned. I've learned the calligraphy in a, in an elementary school. Mm-hmm. And I forgot the middle school. I, yeah, maybe it's a kind of, kind of mandatory class for all kids in elementary school. Okay, so it's required for all elementary school students, right? Yes. And and that's to help you write it, but also to help you read it too. Uh, reading is a calligraphy is a kind of different, a bit different thing because usually uh, in modern Japanese write uh, on computer or pencil, yeah. not not a brush, and uh, calligraphy is more like a kind of drawing picture class. It's yeah. it's like art class. Yeah. Okay. Heidi, do you do you have the same experience? Heidi, I don't. Uh, is she here? Oh, hey. Bad. This is. I want. I want to know if. I want to know from different places. Heidi is also in, sort of in southwestern Japan. She's in Osaka, but um, but I want to. I'm just curious about her experience with it. And um, yeah, anyone else have any experience with? Anyone else ever try uh, a calligraphy of some other language, some other culture? Yes. Yeah. Okay, Wafa, tell me about it. Um, yeah, in Arabic, we learn two handwriting, mm-hmm. but there is more than two handwriting in Arabic. But we just learn two. It's called uh, Kufa mm-hmm. and Ruqa. There's two kinds of handwriting? When you're talking about the Arabic language? No, yes. Uh-huh. Um, what's the difference? Different is the hand, handwriting. So, but do they? I mean, are they similar though? You can they still they still look. Yeah, uh, the, they are readable, mm-hmm. but it, it's just that it's different with the like article pen. Different with the what? Um, I don't know how to explain it, but it's different when you see the. Um, the form maybe the handwriting is more uh, bi- uh, big letters and clear, mm-hmm. but in Roka it's like uh, fast writing and small letters. Okay, so it's still the uh, still the letters as the same. Same shape, same basic shape. So it's just a different style of writing. 
Yeah. One is more fast, one is more blocky. Ah, okay, interesting. Interesting, I didn't know that. Cool. Good. Um, Heidi, are you with us? Yeah. Oh, you're here. <laughs> I didn't hear you before. Um, have you been listening here? I was sleeping very too. Ah, hi, I thought maybe you were sleeping. That is right. <laughs> This must be this is a boring class for Heidi because she <laughs> probably took this class when she was five years old. It's like this is review for her. She knows yeah. all about the like, no, it's, it's, it's early in the morning here. <laughs> I know it is. I know. No problem, no problem. I was asking, um so Ken was telling us that he learned um uh Japanese calligraphy like the uh, strokes and stuff uh, in in elementary school, and it was required. And what kind of what what is your experience with with such such things? This is I learned uh, as well. Mhm. Mm the same. You you learned in elementary. Yes, the same. Yeah. Okay. And so it's like everyone learns. The... Okay. Cool. I just want to have a little discussion about that. Um. So what what is it called in Japanese? Shuji, shuji. <laughs> Japanese word, calligraphy. Shuji. Um, I've heard before that they say kanji. What is kanji? Uh, kanji is a um character, Chinese character. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Yeah. Yes. So kanji is the character, and shuji is. Oh, I have it spelled in a different way in my article here. What about shudu? Is that shodu? Is that different? Yeah, shodo. Yeah, same thing. So that's what my thing says. Uh, so we'll look at this together, and um, and then if Ken and Heidi have anything they want to add or if they think something's wrong, they can correct. Shodo, shuji, yeah, both the same. Okay. Okay. Good. Okay. Interesting. So let's learn about it. All right. So here we are. So who practices Japanese calligraphy? In Jap in, in Japanese calligraphy is called Shodu, or way of writing. Unlike its Western counterpart, it is widely practiced by people of all ages and all walks of life in Japan. Indeed, all Japanese children have to learn the basics of calligraphy as part of their elementary school education, as Ken said. Okay, let's learn about my history. The history of Japanese calligraphy can be traced back to the origins of Chinese civilization and the creation of the Chinese writing system itself about 4,500 years ago. Uh, calligraphy has already been developed a considerable amount by the time uh, it arrived in Japan, sometime around the 6th century. At approximately the same time, the Chinese system of writing, kanji, was also being important. Okay. Um, uh, by the by, the Heian period, the Japanese had already begun to show considerable attainment in the new art form with three great brushes or sanpits of the Buddhist monk Kukai, the Emperor Saga, uh, and the courtier uh, courtier um, Tachibana no Hayanari, um, achieving an apotheosis. I don't know that word. <laughs> Apotheosis, I've never seen that word. In the uh, then popular calligraphic style of the Tang Chinese master, Yan Zhenqing. These three were succeeded in the 10th and 11th centuries by the three traces, or Sanseki. Ono no Tofu, Fujiwara no Sukemasa, also known as Fujiwara no Sai, and Fujiwara no Yukinari also known as Fujiwara no Kozai. 
um, who developed the first uniquely Japanese expression of calligraphy called Wayu. Fujiwara no Yukinari's form led to the creation of the Sesonji school, whereas Ono no Tofu's style started the uh, Shuren school that later produced the Oye style, sorry about my pronunciation, <laughs> of writing that was uh, dominant during the Edo period. From its roots in ancient Chinese civilization, Japanese calligraphy has continued to grow and develop in style and form with its Zenei Sho and avant-garde post-war calligra calligraphy style, representing just the latest stage in evolution. In the course of this development, Japanese calligraphy has also had considerable influence on Western art, particularly on Matisse and Picasso, uh, the, that latter of whom is said to have remarked, he had been, uh, had he been born Chinese, he would most likely have ended up a calligrapher rather than a painter. Uh, there's a lot of, there's a lot of tough grammar there. <laughs> um, uh, it's free flowing influence can also be seen breaking the monopoly of formal typesetting in industrial art. A good example of this being the brush stroke logo of the technology company Lucent. You guys, it, now this has actually changed their logo, I believe. Um, let's, let's see what they're talking about. This logo, see that? That's that. That's like Japanese calligraphy, and that's uh, Western business. Um, so there's the three basic writing styles. We have kaisho. Kaisho literally means correct writing. In other words, this is the style in which the strokes is made in a deliberate and clear way, creating a form that is very similar to the printed version of the character that one might see in a newspaper. This is the form that students of calligraphy study first, since it is close to the everyday written characters they are already familiar with. But at the same time, it gives them the opportunity to get used to using the brush or fude correctly. Below, you can see the character for dream written in kaisho style on the left uh, and on the right as written in a word processor, I should say below, because I made it small. Notice how similar they are in form. Okay, by the way, this is an art and literature class, and we're really combining art and literature here, aren't we? Um, uh, gyusho. Uh, gyusho literally means traveling writing and refers to the semi-cursive style of Japanese calligraphy. Like cursive handwriting in English, this is the style that most people will usually use to write with, when taking notes. Furthermore, as with English cursive style, uh, what are written as separate strokes in kaisho style flow together to form a more rounded whole in gyusho. Uh, text written in this style is usually, it's uh, can, another mistake, can usually be read by the majority of educated Japanese. Um, this, the same character is written in gyusho. Um, so this is, this is the same character in gyusho. It's a little bit more, a little faster, a little bit more like a note you're jotting down. Uh, notice how it is more flowing and artistic. I would hang that on my wall. That's beautiful. A lot of people get tattoos, right, of, of these kind of things because it's a very beautiful thing. Uh, and then we have susho, which means grass writing and refers to the flowing course of style of calligraphy. Here, Form supersedes readability as the calligraphy artist uh, rarely allows her brush to leave the paper, resulting in graceful swooping shapes. Only those trained in shodu are usually able to read this type of script. Notice how the shape of the character is almost completely unrecognizable as the same kanji in print on the right. We're talking about the difference. This is the same character, these two things. It is now more a stylized work of art uh, than a vehicle for conveying information. So oh, that's a really brief overview of uh, Japanese calligraphy. And if you want the link, I'm going to send it to you right now in the chat room. 
you can check it out. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so again, sorry for I don't know Japanese. So sorry for my mispronunciations and everything, but you at least got to know the uh, the basics of um, of Japanese calligraphy. So any thoughts or questions? Anything that you want to add, uh, Heidi or Ken? Is there any mistakes in there? Do you agree? Was that correct, do you think? Was that a good overview? Uh, I don't know the history of the calligraphy, so <laughs> this uh, article is yeah, okay. uh, send the information uh, to me mm -hmm. about your yeah, calligraphy. Yeah. Oh. And you know, yeah. and the social is a bit difficult to recognize for me. Mm -hmm. It's yeah, but yeah. Uh, uh, <laughs> but a gyo kaisha and gyosho is man, a gyosho is ah, uh, but for this character is a bit difficult. But uh, so kaisho is easy, easy, easy to get the meaning. Mm -hmm. oh, okay, so you agree with the where they say that uh, a lot of uh, a lot of Common Japanese folks can't really read the the soshu. Is it? Mm, yeah, kaisho is the easy, easy, mm. easier, mm -hmm. easiest uh, read uh, for modern Japanese. Yeah, yeah I, mm -hmm. I think I guess so. Mm -hmm. Okay. So and then what's the other one? Gyoshu, is that right? Yeah, other two, two uh, gyosho and soshu is a bit difficult. To, especially soshu is very difficult to recognize. Right. So Heidi. Uh, yeah, both are very difficult. Do you write when you're taking notes in Kalingo or when you're copying down stuff? Do you do you write in English or do you write in Gyoshu? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Gyoshu is the. Yeah, you do you Gyoshu. Gyoshu is like printed letter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Gyoshu is like the handwriting. Mm -hmm. So you, you when you take notes when yourself when you take notes you use Gyoshu. <laughs> no. Mm, no, oh, my handwriting is very bad. <laughs> <laughs> so you do your own special Heidi form of Japanese calligraphy. <laughs> Heidi kanji. Yeah, Heidi kanji. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so um. Uh, Christoph, what is which 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 of the three is your book about? Is it about all three, or is it about is it specializing in one style? Um, I don't know what it's a uh, style. I feel it's here yeah, it's uh, many styles. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, I bought this book because uh, uh, I learn by eyes. So I bought this book to learn <laughs> uh, tricky one English, <laughs> ah. because we uh, you have uh, two thousand kanji uh, sign, so you can learn this uh, more popular two thousand uh, English word, and even more because some word uh, means uh, two things like. Uh, uh, day and sun is uh, the one sign, oh. or moon or and month is one sign. Ah, that makes sense. That makes exactly sense. very logical. Uh, and you, for example, uh, have ground. Uh, you add some additional uh, uh, line, and you have king. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you're learning both uh, Jap uh, Japanese kanji and English vocabulary at the same time. <laughs> yes, uh, because I learn by by watching. Uh, I perceive uh, uh, surround by uh, my eyes. Ah, me too. You're a visual learner. Yes, I am visual. Learner. Yeah. So I wanted to find some. Uh, way to learn English easier and that helped me to learn this uh, first uh, 2000 words. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So how many have you learned so far, Krishna? Are you working on it? 
Uh, so uh, kanji is, uh, is only uh, or from Japan, uh, of course, is only two thousand. Mm -hmm. Plus some uh, names, uh, but uh, uh, the main uh, is uh, two thousand. Mm -hmm. And uh, but I now know about uh, ten thousand words from English, so it's much more. Yeah, so how many of the kanji do you know? Uh, kanji? Uh, uh, I don't know <laughs> how many I uh, know of them. Yeah. I, many of them forgot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so you used to study it a little bit as a hobby and now... Yes, like a hobby and I think it's a uh, uh, good art. Mm, yeah, it's beautiful. It's really beautiful, especially this style, the calligraphy style. Not just the yes. kanji, but looking at the calligraphy, it's, it's gorgeous. M many people in the West, you know, buy like a painting of, or, you know, they buy a, like a large chart and they hang it up in their wall, uh, you know. Or you go to a Japanese restaurant, you'll see these tapestries of the writing of the, of the, of the calligraphy. It's, it's very beautiful. Um, so that's why we're doing this in our art class today. Um, so... I see that Yokchen Yokchen is here. Yes, I'm here. How are you? Awesome. I'm doing well. Good to see you today. Yeah, thank you so much. But you said uh, it will be in charge um, after the Monday, but it is free now. I think so. It's just, it'll be uh, it'll change in one hour and fifteen minutes. Oh. Free today. Yeah, you have another hour and fifteen minutes to bask in the glory. Um, yeah, after th after today it will be okay. After as I understand. An hour and fifteen minutes. Okay, no, 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 okay. For everyone. <laughs> we uh, by, um okay, and then we have to evaluate our these minutes because they they are very precious for us. Okay. Very precious, precious minutes. <laughs> yes. Uh, as I keep saying, though, um, if you want to sign up, uh, the first week of, of Colingo will be free to see what it's like, to see what you think of the new program and the new um, design. I, yeah. I'm not sure if we're actually going to change the design or not but I, I, in an hour, but I, I kind of hope so because I'm really excited to see it <laughs> uh, myself since I'm a designer. Um, okay, so any other um but how will we work? Because uh, we didn't sign so far, and what they change from one hour to another, and how to participate in another hour? I have no. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how it works. Uh, it's a mystery. It's a mystery to me. DJ, we have three characters, three kind of characters: hiragana, katakana, and kanji. Mm -hmm. uh, one of my friend, Brazilian friend, he showed me uh, his uh, tattoo mm -hmm. on his back. He um, uh, put a tattoo on the back of his name. His name is Rafael. He wrote on the Chinese, uh, Japanese character. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. I like this. <laughs> it's uh, it's popular. Oh, yeah, okay. Rafael. Yeah. Um, oh. On his back. <laughs> it's that's really popular, actually, yeah. to write yeah. write something in a different language. Tattoo on your on your, it looks very cool because it's a he, he was very proud of that. Oh, <laughs> I yes. love that. People are very proud of it. They like to get a tattoo in another language, like Arabic, Japanese, Japanese, anything with a different script. Kind of Japanese culture is is like a mosaic of you know the uh, Japanese native thing and Chinese. Uh, from Chinese, in kind of from China, kind of thing. So, Japanese writing system is very uh, a bit complicated. Kanji is character, and hiragana and katakana are letters. It describes sounds only. It right. Doesn't have meaning and not a. So it's a bit complicated. Yeah, the other two are the other two. More like, or am I wrong? I might have it backwards. There's three, right? And then the one only has two about two thousand characters. 
But do the other two, yeah. like many, many, like thousands and thousands and thousands? Uh, 2,000 two character, kanji characters are using in Japan, and hiragana and katakana are letters. It's like alphabet. It's only 50 sounds. Oh. 50, let, 50 letters. It's easier to memorize than kanji, oh. uh, Chinese characters. So, uh, so do all Japanese uh, citizens learn all three? Yes, so it takes a long time <laughs> mm. until high school maybe it yeah. finished because mainly memorizing kanji takes a long time. Hiragana and katakana is easy to memorize. And if so, if like let's pretend if I were to want to learn kanji, mm -hmm. and how similar is it? I know that it's been separated from the culture for a long time, but how similar is it um, mm -hmm. to like Chinese now? Now, uh, some ca uh, uh, Chinese characters are same and ja as Japanese, but some others are very different. So, if I uh, uh, see the Chinese text uh, written in Chinese, sometimes I vaguely get the meaning, a part of it, but it, it's uh, maybe ten percent or twenty percent. I'm not sure, but okay, it's interesting. yeah, interesting. Okay, cool, very interesting. Then. Yeah, this is a great class. Um, I want to ask them. Mm -hmm. um, there's some 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 of the Japanese names they write it with the with the kanji, and um, I don't know because I watched before a drama that a uh, person that he writes his name with the kanji and the others was uh, laughing at him that he cannot spell his names right. So, um, is all the names of the Japanese, mm -hmm. they they can write it two ways, with two kinds of letters? Uh, for the name, person's name, uh, usually a uh, Chinese character is used. But so, not the kanji. Uh, that kanji. Chinese character means ka ka um. kanji. Yeah. Th that's yeah. why at the drama that... that uh, the student he write at the board his name with the kanji and all the students was laughing at him. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what happened to the class. Though, anyway. <laughs> so normally there's just one one character for a name. It's a Japanese name. Usually four characters. Uh, mm -hmm. so, so, some some of them has a three characters name, but usually four characters name. That's a common name of Japanese. Does each character have one syllable? No. Several syllables, I guess. Mm -hmm, okay. Interesting. Interesting. Um, so, um, uh, okay, let's, um, let's see if we can remember our uh, article. Okay? And nothing from Heidi or Ken now. You guys have to be quiet. <laughs> And I'm going to test the non-Japanese people here. <laughs> so, um, do you remember how often does the brush leave the paper on a susho, uh, susho writing? And there's three types of writing. In a susho writing, how often does the brush leave the paper? Wakaranai. What, Wafa? Maybe rarely. Rarely. Um, that's yeah. That's that's probably about right. You probably. I mean, technically, according to the writing, you you it leaves when you're done with the character. So, um, it's like the whole thing is done without 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 lifting it off the paper, which is why it's so fluid. So I guess from what I read, the only time you lift it is if you go to the next character. Am I correct, you guys, you Japanese folks? <laughs> Hello, what did you say? In uh, susho writing, um, the only time the brush leaves the paper is when you go to the next character. You know? Uh, I don't know. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, I guess you don't write in susho. <laughs> that's, uh, that's what that's what that's what I got from the from the writing. It's what I got from the um, article at least. So. Uh, and then we have, I was going to ask you how often do you write in script, 
or uh, cursive for those of you who use Latin letters. Like Angel, do you ever do you ever write in cursive? No. Yeah. Okay. That's kind of going away. Well, uh, when I was in in school, <laughs> yeah, I forget to write in that. Yeah. Way. Nobody writes in cursive anymore. And then we have people like. What is cursive? Okay, so cursive in English is going away. So um, we have um, regular uh, text is uh, I'm lefty, sorry, like that, right? If you can see me. And then if I do it in cursive, it's like that, you know, uh, cursive. So it's like a script. I, I didn't spell it very well. There should, that shouldn't be an accent. There are no accents in English. <laughs> so, yeah, but that's a um, um, in English um, or in any language. Yeah, in, well, in usually in Latin, uh, in the Latin alphabet. So languages that use the Latin will also have a cursive. But other languages have cursive too. Um, like uh, I Greek might. Russian definitely has a cursive, which is really different. I mean, if you learn, if you already know the Latin alphabet, to learn the cursive Russian is it's very confusing. But um, so they have a cursive, which is different than their blocked letters. And then Wafa, you're writing basically we, is cursive already. Yes. So and you don't really. We cannot have, write it. Uh, yeah, at the you can't other write way. it anymore. Cursive, it's already cursive. Yes. So and that's what also we, also we write it from the right to the left. Oh, uh, yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So, you know, ours is making it a script. You already write in a script. Your alphabet is script. So cursive is another word to say uh, script. May, maybe the doctors write in cursive. <laughs> yeah, the doctors. In a weird cursive. <laughs> weird cursive. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. All right. So um, you guys... Uh, I'm not going to try to assess your skills on um, adverbs of frequency. I know you guys know those. Um, but um, hmm, maybe uh, maybe I can have Heidi and Ken write all of our names in kanji now. <laughs> <laughs> I already know how to say Angel and Raphael. Yeah. So, oh, uh, Heidi, is that, the, is that actually how to say it? Angel, like, like... Um, yes, angel. Like an actual angel in heaven. Yeah. Or something. <laughs> uh, interesting. All right. Um. So. Next class. Um. I will. Hold on. I'm gonna find this. Nova Scotia. Yes. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so ne next class, I'll be we'll be going to Nova Scotia together, Canada. and um, it'll be our last. I guess uh, from what I hear, it'll be our last um, old-fashioned Kalinga class, as far as I guess I just described. Old-fashioned and free. <laughs> old-fashioned and free. Yeah. It will still be free. You just can't join us. I guess. <laughs> uh, that's the difference. Um, so um, so that's my next class at Nova Scotia. It should be interesting. And I'm excited to see what happens after that um, as far as Colingo goes. I don't know. And I hope to see you guys again sometime. Um, yeah. You can find me on Google and Facebook, so it's easy. So maybe we'll have a chat sometime, like old days. <laughs> um, any other questions? And any questions for Heidi or Ken, since they're uh, more experts about this than me. I woke up early time to um, uh, to check <laughs> my account is going on. To check Kalingo? Yeah. Very excited. And uh, and we're, yeah, and uh, he also got. I'm glad you were here too because I was hoping I'd have a student from Japan, and I have two from Japan, which is awesome. That makes me. They said so good. It's what? They said it's awesome. They say it's so good or psycho. Yes. Psycho. Uh, yeah. <laughs> is that how you say awesome in Japanese? Yeah. Ah. Which is weird for me sometimes. Yeah, so to say 
Psycho. Psycho. Psycho means awesome. Yes. Wow. Psycho means awesome or best, if, the best. Yes. Yeah. If someone t tell me that I'm psycho in Japan, that's it's uh, you are awesome or you are cool something. How do you spell it? I don't know. Yeah. Is it like I spelled it? Is it, was I wrong? Wakaranai. Psycho. Oh, psycho. Oh, okay. Psycho. Uh, or sugoi. So why are there two spellings all the time? Uh, it's a different word. Um, psycho means the best. Literal meaning of best. And sugoi means super. Oh. Uh, okay. It's awesome or cool. Oh. In, 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 yeah. Interesting. Cool. So this English class has turned into a Japanese class. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Awesome. You never know what happens in Anthony's class. Uh, yesterday we were talking about hovercrafts. Um, it was supposed to be talking about something completely different. Uh, all right. Well, I have to prepare for my next class. Um, yeah. And uh, I hope to see you there. So please join me. It'll be our last uh, regular Kalinga class. Old yeah. class. I'm going to say uh, Jenna. I'm crying. So yeah, Angel's crying. Yeah. So we'll, have a, we'll have a little Kalingo party in five minutes. Yeah. Join me for. Uh, oh. for the, it's be like New Year's. We can count down to New Kalinga. Yes. Ten, <laughs> nine, 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 nine. <laughs> Happy <laughs> New Kalingo. <laughs> Happy New Kalingo. <laughs> right? Uh, okay. Cool. So I'm going to get ready for that class. And um, thanks, everyone. Really interesting class today. And thanks, a uh, special thanks to Ken and uh, Heidi, who could tell us about their own experiences. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you. you very much. See you soon. See you. See you. Okay.